So, hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's trading spotlight webinar here together with Admiral Markets. My name is Jens Klatt and I'll be the um, yeah, moderator for the upcoming 45 minutes. Um, uh, today is an is a, um, interesting day, in fact, because we want to focus on a, on a very interesting question. I, I um, receive received and receive still receive um here um what's the right position size in my trading what what, what risk should i take um and uh yeah I, I try to make it a little more catchy because it's a very interesting coincidence that um, um investment and trading um uh market wizards, gurus, um, uh, greats like Warren Buffett, Ed Thorpe, or also Jim Simmons um, are uh, linked to this to this uh, way of, of determining the right position size in their trading. Um, and uh, yeah, we want to dig deeper a little into the uh, basics of this topic here and use a mathematical approach. And then um, what I can already say is we will um, 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 come over a topic which is called the uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulator here at the end of this um, uh, webinar. Um, and the thing is that over the month of October, so something like two, three weeks probably from now, we'll um, have a look here at another way to determine the right position size in your trading, the right risk, um, and uh, based on your personal risk preference, in fact. Um, that's al already something I can mention here. Um, and so, yeah, let's let's uh, probably start. First of all, let's have a look here at today's agenda. So um, at first, we want to have a quick glance here at the three columns of profitable trading. Once again, something I've introduced you already. Uh, we went through um, uh, several columns already, risk and money management. We went through the column of, of trading psychology. Um, and um, also, to some extent, we went through the, through the third um, the the um, column of having a profitable trading strategy, knowing that you have an edge in your trading, and uh, discuss two profitable ones, um, uh, open range breakout strategies on the DAX and also on the S&P. Something you should probably keep in mind because at the end of this webinar, I have something uh, really special for you, a development which is uh, which is I think great, really great, because we opened a trading spotlight um, group called Traders Yard, and uh, there I've um, built something up already. So it's uh, not only me there, but it's also Marcus and, and Paul who will um, answer all your questions there. But today I um, built something or I, I set up something which is uh, based on this tax open range and S&P open range uh, strategy here. Um, so keep this in mind. I'll um, let you know a little later uh, some more details here. Today's agenda, again, second point, which aspects does the right position size in trading cover? Then we want to introduce something we already can call here the Kelly formula. The Kelly formula, which is adopted for traders, in fact. So you have to make small adjustments here to it. Um, also, you have to probably make some necessary adaptions for your trading in general because uh, Kelly is not focusing. That's something I, I can also point out right here. Is not focusing on uh, potential drawdowns, so it completely um, uh, keeps those out of the um, uh, of this formula. Looks only at the optimal position size to get the optimal growth of your equity curve, which is difficult to achieve, especially from a, a mental perspective. We'll see a little later what I mean by that. Um, so you have to make necessary adaptations here. And then uh, the question also very interesting for you is now, or will be then at the end of this webinar, how can you use the Kelly formula in your trading? Um, so this is me. I haven't yet, um, or I haven't yet posted the link here. <clears throat> on my interview I did with, with Admiral Marcus before we started this training spotlight series. Um, but I will post it here below this video. If you watch the recording on, on YouTube, um, you will find the link to this interview and my Vita, in fact, here um, and below this video. By the way, if you're right here and you um, like what you're seeing, please give us a thumbs up or something. Also, ask questions in the, um, the chat box below. We'd really appreciate this, in fact. And that's one of the reasons, back to the a link to the interview, why I won't go here into any further details about my personal Vita. Um, but we definitely want to uh, have a look here at um, Admiral Markets, um, uh, the, the, the broker which makes all this possible here with Trading Spotlight. Um, Admiral Markets is uh, a, a well-known already now and, and quite big compared to many, many competitors here. FX and, and CFD broker with offering right now over 8,000 financial instruments and um, 
can really be considered a multi-asset broker with covering plenty of um, um, yeah financial markets here, not only CFDs, FX, but also physical stocks, for example. Um, then they also introduced futures. I mean, it's CFDs on the future, but still um, futures here um, within the MT5, for example. Uh, Amner Markets is a, is a, in fact, global player. We can call this a global player. Offices in 20 plus countries. So I'm, for example, located in Berlin, in Germany, and um, they also have an office here. So I can, yeah, I'm, I'm in the office in around 20 minutes if, if I want to have a chat with the guys there or drink a coffee or something. Um, but also, and this is very important for many others around the globe. Now, as an English-speaking webinar, you can not only find an English um, um, support here um, with the uh, location in, in uh, uh, in, in the UK and London, but also, for example, um, they have offices in Australia, they have also offices uh, or an office in, in Chile, for example. So around the globe, it's uh, licensed by many, many regulation, re regulatory bodies like the FCA, the CISIC, the ASIC in, in Australia. So, and has, in fact, and when we refer to Admiral Markets here in Germany, we talk about Admiral, we, we refer to Admiral as the so-called DAX expert. So it's a highly competitive offering when it comes to um, uh, DAX 30 uh, trade especially here with a 0.8 point spread um, and in fact there's also an offering which is probably very interesting for short-term traders for scalpers in the DAX they have also a 0.2 offering here when it comes to the spread and then you pay a commission on top um, so definitely worth to give it a look um, alone for that um, um, DAX offering but also I fix very very competitive spreads and um, yeah feel free to reach out to admiralmarkets.com uh, and find out more about the broker I think it's definitely worth a look here and now we have those three people uh, we want to look at first um, and start with our topic today. Um, so I think this guy is probably one you definitely know, probably you heard about him. And this one is someone, uh, or this guy is some someone who is probably not so well known, let's say. So who is Warren Buffett? Um, Warren Buffett, big investor, probably the biggest one of the biggest um, um, investment gurus of our, of, time, of our time. He's the founder of Berkshire Hathaway. Um, so one we definitely know. Jim Simmons is probably not so well known, but this has also something to do with his... Uh, um, uh, yeah, with with his with his um, um, appearance as a hedge fund manager, so um, he's the founder of Renaissance Renaissance Technologies with a current asset under management of 110 billion um, as of 2019. He's a um, in fact former code breaker uh, from the NSA, a mathematician um, who uh, then found his let's call it luck uh, in his. Um, um, luck uh, in, in, in trading, in fact. It's uh, one of the most successful um, hedge fund managers, traders around the globe, billionaire, sure. Um, and then we also have Ed Thorpe, uh, also mathematician, also um, author of a, of a book, very well-known book, Beat the Dealer. So some of you probably have seen the film uh, 21, where uh, we, we uh, saw the story of a team which beat uh, casinos in Las Vegas here out of um, millions of, of dollars playing blackjack. And in fact, the theory behind, well, not just the theory, but he started out in a small casino, um, also trying to beat the dealer by um, then counting cards and everything and optimizing his strategies here, the betting structure by using uh, mathematical approaches like the formula from Kelly. Um, and uh, when uh, yeah, when he when he was um, um, uh, considered too uh, uh, too profitable for the casinos, and was uh, sent out and has had to find his luck somewhere else, um, he decided to go then to the biggest casino in the world, to the Wall Street, and uh, start um, as a trader, um, set up a hedge fund also, and. Um, all these guys have something in common. As, at, at least there, there's rumors that this is the case. Um, they're using a concept which was introduced by Kelly, in fact. And this is something why it's probably worth to bring these people here up and see that uh, the concept I present to you today is something um, it's definitely worth considering at least only because of Buffett, Simmons, and, and Thorpe, um, considering it to be part of the trading and uh, finding out how to, how to find the optimal position size. So let's first, before we start um, with Kelly then, uh, recall the three columns of profitable trading, risk and money management, trading psychology, and trading a strategy with an edge. 
Um, these are the three columns of profitable uh, trading. And I'd also like to um, um, remind you that all these columns interact very strongly with each other. They are not independently from each other, even though it seems as if it's the case, but they are strongly connected here. Um, and there's one example which perfectly illustrates this already. And that's no coincidence, in fact, when uh, looking here at the, today's presentation that I'm pointing out now the uh, interaction between um, risk and money management and trading psychology. So if one column is missing, uh, then it's definitely not possible to be prof profitable with your, with, your, with your trading due to the reason that they are uh, standing there independently, but they interact really strongly with each other. Already something I said. So here we have the risk money management and training psychology example. Very simple one, but some uh, probably already know this from, uh, from their trading. If you have an inadequate position size in your trading, um, this will definitely affect your mental stability. So let's, let's put it that way. If you um, trade too big, if the position size in your trading is too big, then you naturally tend to become very emotional during a trade and just thinking, oh gosh, ho hopefully the market will move in my direction. If it moves against you, you're probably about to... Um, take out the stop, for example, because you say, well, rather sooner the market will probably uh, turn around here. And before I, I face a bigger loss now due to my big position size, um, um, due to stop fishing, whatever, I, I try to somehow um, uh, yeah, manage it in a, let's call it discretionary way. Um, and there's a natural tendency if you trade too big that you cut winning trades short and that Again, you widen your stop, take it out, have or in, that you do not have to realize your loss. So now the thing is um, that this is something which is uh, definitely you have to cope with when trading. Still, um, you will see that you're not only, let's put it already here. It's, it's probably, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up already here. So when we are trading, it's not only about um, um, making losses small. I, I think this is crucial for long-term success and something you have definitely to believe. Still, for all the pain you take when trading the markets, you want at the end of the day see um, um, a reward. Not necessarily at the end of the day, probably takes some some time till you really um, um, capitalize on your positive expected value and see a growth in your equity curve. But in general, what you want to see is most optimal growth of your equity curve based on your edge you have in your trading. So, um, and with that in mind, there's always something you, you have to find a balance here. You have to find a balance by taking a risk, which is adequate compared to your trading strategy to the edge you have and um, reducing the so-called risk of ruin to nearly zero so that you do not have the risk of, of uh, ruining your, or, or um, 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 crushing, crushing your account. On the other hand, you want to see a reward for all the work you put in, for all the pain you take by trading, um, and, and also especially from a mental perspective. So now we come to the question, how can we find the right position size? So I've already put it in a, in a, in a quite, um, uh, yeah, in, in not such a clear way, but nevertheless, between the lines, you could have read what I, what I will present to you now. So the right position size obviously has to make sure two things. It should keep potential drawdown small. That is what I mean by reducing the risk of ruin here to zero so that you have enough time, you give yourself enough room to make mistakes in your trading um, and you are still in the game once the uh, positive expected value in your trading materializes then. Um, on the other hand, it's also true surely from a mental perspective. Just imagine you're trading a strategy and uh, you, you have to face a loss of let's say 40% of your account, which is already quite big drawdown in this case. Um, and and it just imagine you, you have to, to, to swallow losing half of the account uh, and then rather soon later probably make those losses back and then turn it into, into a profitable. So this is something which is really, really difficult and a good position um, um, sizing algorithm you use in your trading when trading your strategy should cover in fact to keep potential drawdown small um, and also on the other hand it should make clear uh, or it should, yeah we, we should see um, an optimal growth of our equity curve here so now the interesting thing is uh, when looking at these two aspects here at these two points usually webinars cover it from uh looking at the drawdown perspective first. And I think this makes definitely sense, and it's the way I, for example, present 
educational content to the listeners, to the readers of my books, to the listeners of my webinars. Because I think once you take care of your losses and, and, and take care of your risk in your trading, the winning trades will take care of themselves. Um, nevertheless, today we'll tackle it from another um, uh, angle and we'll go here for two instead of one at least first, and then we'll do uh, or we'll make the necessary adaptations here. So at first we want today ignore the potential drawdowns and only focus on the optimal growth of the equity curve. And um, to make sure that you get this optimal um, 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 growth of your equity curve, we have a chance to use the so-called Kelly criterion. Um, because Kelly, John Kelly, uh, a mathematician, answered this question already in the 1950s. Um, he asked the question, how can I create the optimal growth of my equity curve if I know certain parameters of my trading strategy? In fact, Kelly looked um, at uh, casino games like blackjack, for example. Um, still, uh, the, the, the beautiful thing about Kelly is that his approach is in fact, at least from a purely theoretical standpoint, um, not capable of crashing your account because um, you always reduce the position size once you're in a drawdown. The only problem is from a mental perspective, in fact. But Kelly um, formulated a strategy, which is, uh, or not a strategy, but uh, but uh, um, 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 position sizing algorithm or formula which makes it impossible to reach the point of ruin in your trading so in fact you can show that when you're not trading with leverage um, and, and under let's call it normal market conditions it should be impossible to crush the account in fact but nevertheless drawdowns can really escalate and quickly escalate um, and that's why Kelly has to be um, treated in a very careful way I will show you how you can use it in your trading a little later on. First of all, we want to introduce right away the Kelly criterion for traders. And in fact, that's the formula. So um, if you want to do a screenshot, do the screenshot here, because this is the formula and everything you need to know, even though I do not recommend using this strategy without the necessary adaptations. Um, and uh, I want to, to show you now what is F, what is a POR, in this case, hit rate and loss rate should be self-explaining. So F is the amount you're risking per position and percentage, and POR is the so-called payoff ratio. So this is the average gain to the average losing rate. Um, something we, by the way, also introduced already, and um, there is, right now, I'm not really sure whether I showed this chart already to you or the graphic, but there's also a negative, um, or um, yeah, we can call it negative correlation um, um, here between the payoff ratio and the risk of rein, which means if uh, the payoff ratio grows, usually the risk of rein of your trading decreases and the other way around. So payoff ratio incre uh, decreases, so this should usually result in the... Um, risk of ruin, so crashing your account or reaching your personal point of ruin, um, that, should, that should affect it in a negative way. So decreasing payoff ratio means increasing risk of ruin and the other way around. And what's very interesting about this payoff ratio is in fact, because, or it shows already why um, successful profitable traders usually say, let winning trades run and cut losing trades short, because let winning trades run means nothing more than increase your average gain, while make losing trades short means decrease your average loss, which means, in fact, let, losing trades run, uh, let, let winning trades run and cut losing trades short means nothing more. Increase your payoff ratio. And if you know about the mathematical, um, 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 the mathematical um, aspect behind this in regards to the risk of ruin, you can already see, okay, that means then um, it's, it's another saying of uh, try to reduce the risk of your ruin in your trading, in fact. So now let's come here to an example to make probably sure that, that um, um, you get this formula a little better. So just imagine that you have a trading system which has a hit rate of 40% and uh, that you make on average three times more when you win um, in, uh, as, as when you lose, in fact. So then you can see that the payoff ratio here comes out at three to one. And then you can already enter those numbers here into the formula. So we say, that F here, the amount we are risking per position in percent, um, comes out at 0.4. This is the hit rate here, 40%. And then we subtract our loss rate, which is the um, opposite of our win rate, which means then 60% because we uh, come out at 100%. So it's 0.6. And we divide this by three, our payoff ratio, which we here calculated as three to one. 
So in the next step, we then have, since we have to first uh, calculate here, um, uh, those 0.6 through 3, uh, or divided by 3, we get out at 0.4 minus 0.2, and then we have 20%, in fact. 0.2 equals 20%, oh, I'm sorry. Um, which means, in fact, if you now have to write down what this means, you have to risk, given those uh, parameters of your trading strategy, you have to risk 20% of your um, um, given equity here to get the optimal growth of your equity curve based on Kelly, in fact. So just imagine that 20%. So um, we, already, we can already see here that this is probably a little too much, if slightly, only only slightly too much, but you, you can see it. 20% is probably way, way too much. Still, um, Kelly is not focusing here on, on uh, emotional stays or something or mental instabilities. He doesn't care about that. It's a uh, mathematician and the mathematician don't care about that. They just give you the formula and they calculate um, uh, what's the optimal size of your, of your um, uh, position here for your trading strategy to get the optimal growth of your equity curve, in fact. Um, and uh, so, nevertheless, I want to make some adoptions here already, um, but you can, or well, you will still see that this is not um, uh, getting the job done, in fact. So we have to make another adaptation um, after that. But um, let's have a look here then at uh, now our system rate, which um, our system, which may have a hit rate of 30%, and then we have a payoff ratio of three to one. Um, so in fact here, the hit rate of 30% is very low. Obviously, we're looking here at the trend following the strategy, most likely. Um, so a long, longer term trend following strategy, we can call that probably. So now we, we look here at our formula, formula once again, and um, we have F, so the amount we are risking here per trade, HR is our hit rate, LR is our loss rate, and then we have the payoff ratio again. So we give in those um, details here, and we have 0.3 for our hit rate, 30%, and then we have um, the loss rate given with 0.7. They have to add up to one, um, so 100%, and we divide this by three again. So then we get out here at 0.3 minus 0.23, and at the end, we have F given with 7%. So given those parameters, it says that Kelly tells us to get the optimal growth of our equity curve, we have to risk 7% of our um, trading capital. Um, so now we suggest the following. Let's say we have a 10,000 euro trading account um, and we risk 7% risk per trade, which is 700 euro. And I, I write here probably too big, it's definitely too big. It's way too big because uh, you have a high chance of reaching your point of green very quickly. Also, if it's given at, at 100%, in fact. Um, and all the time risking such a sum here, even though I already said this, you probably re remember it's probably 10 minutes ago, I said Kelly makes it um, um, impossible to reach the point of rein. Why is that? Because once you trade and you're on the losing side, um, your hit rate drops while your loss rate obviously increases, which then means nothing more that also the F decreases. So um, it's, it's like dynamic uh, position algorithm given your uh, recent trade data, in fact, how, how much money you're willing to take here. So it's not a, um, a static risk of 7% you take per each trade. The same is true, by the way, if you're on a, on a winning streak, in fact. So once the hit rate increases, the risk you're taking per trade also increases even though it's only slightly, but the longer such a streak takes, the longer usually should, you should, um, or the more you increase your position size, which is also very interesting right now because some might already say, okay, but the trend, when looking at a trend following strategy here, for example, isn't the trend getting older with time? Just imagine you have uh, like five, six, seven progressions or something. Um, yes, in fact, it, it gets older, so chances of a reversal or a trend, um, now the trend um, being broken here, increases, which means your position size is most likely the biggest uh, once the market turns, which is something you have to take into account here and probably um, um, then have a clear rule which tells you when to take out the risk out of your, out of your trading here. Um, the older a trend, for example, um, 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 grows in this case. So now let's come back to the um, um, uh, example. 7% 7, 7 risk per trade, you have 700 euros. Okay, that's too big, even if you're a very aggressive trader and you can handle the emotional swings in your account well. So now I came up with the following idea. Um, 
it's probably I, I'm not really sure, in fact, whether whether this is um, um, uh, something you can find in the internet or this is something you can find in a book or something. So, in fact, I, I just came up with this uh, solution. I thought about this myself. I found the Kelly criterion very interesting, as also from a mathematical standpoint. And then I just thought, okay, how can I adapt this um, and 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 uh, include this in my trading, but uh, try to get the risk lower, in fact. And um, in fact, I came about something. This is probably worth mentioning here. Um, there is uh, one book within the Market Wizard series. It's called um, Hedge Fund Market Wizards. And uh, within the series, Jack Schwager um, interviewed also Ed Thorpe. And Ed Thorpe made one mentioning here within this um, interview where he made Kelly a, a topic, in fact, in the Kelly criterion. And what he also said is something which is uh, brought up here. So I have no mathematical proof of that, but um, I believe in this case, Thorpe with his um, remarks here in this book. He says, if you cut down the um, uh, um, account by half, you get only 75% um, uh, of the optimal growth of your equity curve, but with only half of the volatility in your equity curve, which is very interesting, in fact. And that's the reason why we cut here the um, account in half. So the, we, are, we, are, uh, we assume we still have 10,000 euro in our account, but we're not working with the full 10,000, but we now go down to 5,000 by cutting it in half dividing it by two. So that means um, we also cut the risk we are taking per trade um, in half, 7% of 5,000 in this case, which means we are only risking 3.5% of 10,000 euros or 350 euros. So I already mentioned this, we are not getting the optimal growth of the equity curve now anymore, but we get still 75% while reducing the volatility in our equity curve by 50%, which is already very important from a mental perspective. Still, when um, running or having a trading strategy with um, certain um, parameters like hit rate, payoff ratio, uh, you will find out that still, even if you do this step here, you get an enormous volatility within all the simulated equity curves. And uh, this is uh, the reason why I then came up with another step here. We take the square root of the result. Um, so we take the square root of uh, 3.5 in this case and get down to 1.8% per trade. And then we have our risk, um, or Kelly risk, or uh, let's call it adapted Kelly risk given at one8 uh, percent risk per trade, in fact. So that's that's my idea here. And now we come to a Monte Carlo simulation. I mentioned this already several times. Now I still have a problem because you will see here, uh, I think the charts look really nice. The only problem we have now is the following. So the source of this Monte Carlo simulator is a German source. It's a German website. It's in fact my website. Um, I um, um, brought up when I uh, wrote my second book. It's called Trader. It's a German book in this case. And um, the reason I, I thought about such a website was that um, usually topics like yeah, abstract topics, especially like risk and money management, um, are something you probably read something about, but it's not really that you that you understand what's happening there. And that's uh, what that was the moment when I thought it probably makes sense to give people um, a website when reading the book to use the acquired knowledge then and to see how equity curves um, um, develop here, for example, what this means to potential drawdown in their trading. And this is um, the idea behind this. Still, I, I have no real source for, for an English um, Monte Carlo simulator, but I think it is also with Google Translator easy to, uh, to approach here. So if you go to the website, you can see uh, right in the header somewhere Monte Carlo simulation. You can only click on this, scroll down a little, and then you have the um, simulator. And there you have the so-called Startkapital. This is the moment um, where you start. It's 10,000 here. It's the number of trades. This is um, unsold trades. It's number of trades here. It's 500. So um, you can simulate a number of trades you want to generate um, equity curves then. Then you have here your hit rate in percentage. In this case, it's 30%. Then you have here uh, the Simulationsdurchläufe. This is um, the number of curves you create, in fact. You have here, in this case, 15. I could also have 50, but the thing is that you only see, um, yeah, a colorful picture, but not really um, um, an equity curve anymore. That's why I only use 15 in this case. And then I have here the payoff ratio, self-explaining, three to one. And then we have a risk per trade given by what we just calculated with 1.8. The great thing about this, by the way, is that um, I've also included here 
a Kelly component. Um, so this is usually what you see at the um, 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 bottom of this of this um, um, chart here of this tool, um, and Kelly is already calculated. And um, so what you can then see is that we have our ten thousand euro account, we have our calculation, um, and we are already down at one point eight here. So we have to do this manually. So this is this is pure Kelly, let's say. So, and then we create the equity curves. And what's most interesting in this case is um, you can see here the average performance is quite impressive. After 500 trades, you're up 522%, uh, in fact, and this is average. So that means you could easily have um, um, ten, um, uh, tenfold the, the account within this period here with such a risk. But what's more interesting is the fact, and there's something you can see here, it's the so-called größter maximaler drawdown. It's the biggest max drawdown um, you're facing here within these generated equity curves. And it's only one example. So it's probably, uh, it's possible that you get even a bigger max drawdown here. And you can see it, the biggest max DD we had was 47.6%, or put it differently, we already reduced uh, Kelly here by cutting our risk, um, or let's say the, the, the account in half, uh, cutting the risk in half then, and then also taking the square root, and you still have a max DD here with Kelly of nearly 50% of the equity. This is completely unacceptable for um, someone who is um, 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 thinking about risk in his trading, which is very, very important. And uh, so that given, um, we, we have to make another adaptation. And uh, this is something you will then um, come about in the last step. It's the summary top here. Um, and Let's first sum up everything and then give an idea of how to make another adaptation. I haven't yet um, found um, an, an, an idea of how to do that. Uh, um, or no, not, I haven't found an idea, but I have not pre prepared um, a slide for that. Um, let's first sum up what we know so far and then make the, uh, in my opinion, necessary adaptation. So the Kelly criterion gives you the chance to fight the find the optimal position size for the optimal growth of your equity curve while ignoring potential drawdowns, something we know already. Ignoring potential drawdowns is definitely something we uh, should not just only take and then say, okay, that's it, and fine, then we ignore the drawdown. No, we should always care about the drawdown. It's very important to know that using Kelly when finding your position size does not mean that you get a better performance. In fact, you can, you can show um, that there is a point from which the performance dramatically drops lower. And this is especially true when we um, uh, consider the fact that we trade leverage products when trading CFDs, FX, for example. And um, that could mean that we push by overly and overly aggressive over aggressively use um, Kelly here, that we could push the envelope here too far. And this will not only result in a massive drawdown, but potentially kill the account in fact. So, and now we come to the idea I would suggest here, potential solution. Um, when you say this is interesting, uh, and this is something I really like to consider for my trading, um, it probably makes um, sense to do the following. You use only one part of your trading capital, which you trade aggressively with Kelly, and you trade the other part conservatively. So put this differently to the um, max drawdown we've seen here in, the, in this uh, graphic. Let's say we, we somehow see that uh, with such a risk, we stabilize we're after several, um, um, or doing um, 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 several such uh, simulations here, uh, we, we stabilize somewhere around 50% in this range so that we have once trading 10,000 euro account with 1.8% risk um, that we have after a series of 500 trades um, um, a max DD which stabilizes around 50%. So if you have this, um, we could do the following. We could say, okay, well, what about, what about then um, using only 10% of our uh, trading capital traded with Kelly and trade the other 90% um, uh, conservatively with a um, yeah, risk and money management approach we can then or we will probably introduce um, um, in a later webinar 
why not doing this? I think this, this makes the most sense here. Um, so which, which means nothing more than you have a 10,000 euro account and then you use a 10% uh, or 1,000 euro from this account and trade it with Kelly with 1.8% risk. The great thing, this is something which is also very interesting about um, Atma Markets as a broker. Um, they offer so-called micro lots. So this is possible to trade such a small account with um, um, even such a risk here with 1.8% because they give you the chance to really scale down your position size. So this is something um, which is definitely worth considering since uh, this could then act in times of um, good performance as a kind, let's call it a, trans um, 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 a performance booster, while um, during times when it doesn't work well or you're race facing a big massive drawdown, it does not affect the overall performance or only in a slight way, in a small way, the overall performance of your conservatively traded um, account, the other 90% of your, of your equity. Um, so that's the first thing, how you could use it. And also, some people might probably say, okay, yeah, sounds fascinating, great topic, Kelly, yes, but really, I'm not sure whether this makes really sense uh, in my trading at all. Still, I think that um, Kelly gives also traders who do not consider trading at least part of their um, capital with Kelly gives them an, an enormous advantage, respectively, uh, very important information about their trading. Because Kelly perfectly shows that you need to have a trading strategy with a positive expected value since you don't get a Kelly optimized position size if you don't have such a strategy. Let's assume the following. So probably I write this down. Um, unfortunately, I haven't prepared it, um, but one second. I'll just open, I'll just open it. One sec, let's work with an editor here. I'll go quickly through this. Um, and I, I just hope that, that um, I'm, I'm still that, that it's, uh, it becomes clear what I'm talking about. So what we know is the expected value is given by the average gain multiplied with the hit rate and then we subtract one second. We subtract the average loss multiplied with the loss rate. So, and we know that profitability in trading is given with a positive expected value. Okay, great. Now let's recall Kelly. Kelly said that you should risk F, this is the amount you're risking on your trading capital, is given by here the hit rate, and then you subtract the loss rate, and you divide this by the POR, the payoff ratio. So now let's assume the following. You have a trading strategy, which is, let's say, given with a hit rate of 40%, okay? Hit rate, 40%, okay. And then you have a payoff ratio, average gain of average loss, average gain to average loss of 1.5 to one. So the question is now, Kelly, question mark, um, F equals the hit rate, which is 40%, 0 0.4, and you subtract 0 0.6 and you multiply this with 1.5. And what can you see? You can see that you should not risk anything at all. It's zero. Um, let's assume that here the, the, the payoff ratio is 1.4. Let's say 1.4 to 1. Um, you will see that it's a negative number you get out. So it, the, the, the negative result means nothing more. You're not trading with an edge. You're not trading with an edge means you shouldn't trade at all. You should wait till you have an edge, till you, where your strategy uh, gives you a positive expectancy in your trading. And then you should start trading and you can start using Kelly else you just can't use it. It's not possible. So what this means is you can, with a very simple formula, here by Kelly, look at your overall trading. And if it doesn't give you um, uh, a result, a positive result, it means you're not trading with an edge. So this is something which is definitely um, a good reason to, to have a deeper look here at Kelly because it already tells you um, if you're trading with an edge or not, at least given the latest data of your trading in this case. So um, 
yeah, and uh, that's it around this topic. And as promised at the beginning, I'd like to use the last five minutes now to show you something which is uh, awesome. It's just great. I, I really love it already. And um, I, I, I'd really um, enjoy you guys um, I'm joining us there. Um, so we have now a trading spotlight community. We set this up here in the so-called traders yard and you can see it here you get support after the webinar so that means if you now have any questions um, around the webinar which weren't answered during uh, this this webinar here please feel free to join this community and to ask the questions um, you you might have now after the webinar or if you watch the recording of the webinar I mean you can ask the questions also in the chat box here in the YouTube channel below also chance on I, I, I think you would get an answer there too but still um, you will definitely get an answer here within this trading spotlight um, community um, we not only answer questions but we also discuss trading strategies upcoming market events let's assume we started this community already last week on Friday so we would have definitely discussed what happened here during the ECB on Thursday and what is the potential outcome of the uh, Fed press conference then um, uh, what's the um, outcome of the press Fed press conference or Fed rate decision in general on, on Wednesday, for example. Um, you can not only discuss this with us, by the way, but with all community members. So you can also discuss with, um, uh, with each other here. You get trading updates from Marcus, from Paul, and also from me, and, uh, and see how we react. And in fact, when trades go our way or if they don't go our way. Um, and you get also recordings of the webinars you missed, and you can sign up now. It's in fact tradersyard.com just join this this um, URL here and then you join the trading spotlight group tradersyard.com slash group slash 312 um, and uh, in fact we we limited this because we we expect the um, demand to be quite high for this we limited this for one month um, and you can join us here with without having a, a live account with Admiral Markets. After that, we will then limit it. So you have one month now, just register, join the community, um, and feel free to discuss with us. And I also want to show you something I set up today, and it's probably already um, giving you, where do we have it here? Um, it's giving you already a taste of, of, of what we are after. So right now, no trades have, have been taken, but this is how it looks here. Hopefully, go to please enlarge okay so usually usually it should enlarge but for whatever reason um, this is how it looks okay um, and now what I here there we go and something I did now uh, based on our trading spotlight series um, uh, webinars we had already with, regarding the DAX strategy and also the S&P 500 strategy I thought about the following even though it's only a demo account but still what, what we are after here is really educating people and, and, and show them how the process to become a profitable trader works and um, so I set up a 10,000 um, um, euro demo account here with um, no leverage um, 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 no with a leverage restriction that way around so after asthma um uh we we now have a leverage of 20 to 1 in all indices for example and um it's a standard demo account 10,000 and it's not necessary to have a professionalization of or something it's really possible to trade the strategy without such a such a step in regards to the leverage and what i now did is um i set up this demo account and i let two expert advisors run on this account with a basic strategy. So um, the parameters of these strategies are written down here once again. You can also watch the recording. It's um, within the uh, YouTube channel for Opera Markets. And it's two EAs. It's one on the DAX. It's one on the S&P. And I trade these two strategies automated every day. And now it's not only that I trade these and I keep you updated. So I will run, by the way, a test today. So I'm, I, I hope everything is fine. It should be fine still. There could be some issues for whatever reason. And so let's see whether it works. Um, or not but what I will do is I will collect all trades on an external side where uh, the account is synced to um, so there's an account synchronization which means here we use FX blue and I set up so right now no trades have been taken so there's no um, um, reports yet but next week we'll definitely have one and I, I also see one to have to have one already today with the trade taken in the S&P, potentially taken, let's say. And everything will be collected here. And this is the great thing about this, and that's why we do that, or why I thought about doing it, is I want to collect 
real market and, and data and also trading results, we can work with them. For example, if we have a hit rate and payoff ratio, well, what could be greater than use all this input here and then um, Kali optimize it. Even if we don't trade Kali then, because we still keep on trading here 0.8% per trade um, risk, but still we have an idea of how to optimize it with Kelly and have a practical example of how to use it, um, for example, but also optimize position size during drawdowns, for example, everything. So this is um, the target after that and, uh, or with, with this, with this uh, community. And again, feel free to, to join us here and really appreciate um, to welcome you here, answer all your questions. The same is true for Marcus and for Paul. By the way, Marcus and Paul, one second. Let me just switch back here. Um, Next time, webinar time is Monday, same time, uh, so 3 p.m. German, it's 1 p.m. GMT, it's 2 p.m. London. Uh, Paul will be here and uh, he will talk about a simple moving average trading strategy, including the value of simple moving average averages, um, whether you're a beginner or already an advanced trader, um, how to implement this simple strategy in your trading, and the time will be Monday, 1 p.m. GMT, September 23rd, and uh, yeah, since you already registered um, all the attendees right now, you will uh, you can check your webinar, uh, uh, your your um, mail box inbox for the webinar link. Everyone watching the recording now on YouTube, feel free to register here uh, via the following um, via the following link. Just join the website at normarkets.com. Go to the um, um, uh, education tab here or just type in this this URL within your um, um, browser and uh, yeah for more analysis education feel free to reach out to abnormarkets.com or our traders yard group we set up and uh, these are the contact details and now very 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 important at the end here the risk disclaimer please feel free to read it it's uh, also to be found on the website abnormarkets.com and um, that's it from my end I wish you all the best. Happy trading. Watch your stops. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. And uh, hopefully um, talk to you again next week then um, on Friday with the Trading Spotlight. Or um, we already see each other and talk to each other, chat with each other in the uh, Traders Yard group. I look forward to it. So have a nice one. See you. Bye-bye.